And for Singaporean conductor Ka Chun Wong and Marina Mahler, who's the granddaughter of renowned composer Gustav Mahler, they aim to share their love of music, classical music in particular, with children. So with that aim in mind, they founded Project Infinitude together with a child at Street 11, which is a charity and preschool for children from diverse and under-resourced backgrounds. The project provides an inclusive space for children to explore classical music. To tell us more about this project, we are joined by the man himself, Kachun Wong. Hi, Kachun. Now, Kachun, how did the idea to start Project Infinitude come about? Well, this was in 2016. I've just won the Mala competition in May in that year, and I've got to know Marina Mala a little bit better. And so while we were just talking about how classical music is developing in Asia, one of the very common threads that we have been mentioning up, bringing up over and over again, was the fact that there is a lot of interest right now within Southeast Asia for classical music, but at the same time, um, there is also this idea that classical music can be elitist, can be something that is out of reach to normal Singaporeans, um, normal Asians. And so I think that is very untrue, mm. because my, my, I myself come from a very, uh, I would say, simple, um, humble family background. And because of a lot of instances that I have had very good luck that allowed me to uh, meet important people that helped me with music, I thought this was also a right moment for me to pass this on to open a similar window of opportunity, really something for young children, especially from under-resourced backgrounds. Mm. Now, of course, uh, for those of you who are watching us, uh, to find out more about Project Infinitude, you can watch the seven-part digital series, Why Music Matters. The episodes air every Thursday on the Straits Times uh, website and social media channels. Kachun, let's move on to another endeavour of yours. As a mark of global solidarity during the COVID-19 outbreak, you assembled local and overseas artists to put on a virtual performance of Beethoven's Ode to Joy. And this three-minute music video was aired on the Straits Times, YouTube and Facebook channels last Thursday. So how was the reception for that? Well, I think we, all of us, never expected to be so um, supported by our audiences, mm -hmm. by our viewers. We're very grateful for that. But at the same time, I have to really preface this entire discussion by saying that I am personally very, very grateful to my musicians because these musicians coming from Singapore but also the rest of the world have all basically uh, generously contributed their own time and effort into putting this together. Um, and to say that now, um, Singapore is almost like a kind of international musical kampong where then we have musicians from yeah from from Nuremberg which is where my orchestra is but from the London Phil from Minnesota from Thailand from the Thailand Philharmonic from Japan Philharmonic all these musicians are coming now digitally mm. in the video playing side by side along the best Singaporean young uh, artists here we have it is a kind of kampong ideal kind of musical kampong which I've always wanted to have. There is the idea of multi-general, multi, multi generations playing together. You have the young and old, you have um, inclusion and diversity. Because of this project, um, I, I spent quite a bit of time learning Singapore Sign Language and I've been actually quite infatuated with, with learning more about this very special way of communicating. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we also have East and West tradition and innovation and in many ways, isn't this the Singaporean story? So I'm, I'm quite happy uh, we've been part of this, and I think there's going to be more to come. Yeah, and you know, catching on that note, we understand that uh, apart from it being a tribute to, to Beethoven's work, it is also a part of a global campaign. Tell us more about that. You know, 2020 is Beethoven's 250th birthday. And orchestras, arts organizations worldwide have planned uh, huge celebrations for his music. But I would imagine at least until, until the end of summer, um, a big half of this year, a lot of events would have to be postponed. And so um, I thought this would be a, actually a great moment to say that not only these musicians that I've asked around the world to join, uh, we don't want just to restrict it to um, this little club of ours. We think that the Ode to Joy 
deserves to be heard and sung by music lovers all around the world. And so there is now this campaign going on where anyone can submit a video of themselves singing the Ode to Joy. And when I say sing, it's really figuratively because if someone says, I actually don't know German, um, I don't like to sing, but I like to hum. I like to whistle the melody. I like to play an instrument, or I like to just uh, uh, play play some percussion instruments and, and beat along to the tune. Mm. Any submission would be possible, and we want to welcome um, uh, anyone from the world to send in their entries, which we will then piece together into sort of a gigantic um, musical kampong orchestra choir around the world. Well, thanks so much, Kachun. That was Singaporean conductor Kachun Wong, and he was speaking about the global campaign to invite people from around the world to send in short musical submissions for Ode to Joy. And if you want to be part of his Kampong Orchestra, you can find out more details in this link. It's also in the description below. If you're watching us on YouTube, the deadline for submissions is May the 31st.